everyone, Emily Teacher here, and today we're reading Journey to the Soviet Union. A war without battles. What kind of war is that? Answer, the Cold War. It was fought between the Soviet Union and the United States, and it lasted from 1945 to 1990. Each side had more than enough weapons to destroy the other if the Cold War turned hot. Fear was in the air. P people built bomb shelters in their homes, and at school, children were taught to what to do if the country came under attack. Most people accepted that this is just the way it was. Not Samantha Smith, a fifth grader from Maine who anguished over the possibility of nuclear war and decided to do something about it. In 1983, she wrote a letter to the leader of the Soviet Union containing an earnest plea for the two superpowers to settle their differences peacefully. So the Cold War, right, a war between the United States and the Soviet Union um, that went for a long, long time. Um, and for a lot of that time, people were afraid that either the Soviet Union or the United States would fire their nuclear weapons, right, and horrible things would happen. So people had bomb shelters built, um, children were taught at schools how what to do if there was an attack. People were really scared for a long time, and they weren't able to hear everything that was going on. So many people just decided it was just the way it was. They couldn't do anything about it, except for a fifth grader in Maine, Samantha Smith. So she decided in 1983 to write a letter to the leader of the Soviet Union, um, really asking honestly, right, for the two superpowers, for the United States and Soviet Union to peacefully resolve their issues and not start wars. She waited several months before her letter elicited a reply, which came in the form of a mysterious phone call. A man with a strong Russian accent thanked her for her letter and told her she would be receiving a written reply within a few days. Samantha was not that sure that the phone call was genuine. She thought that it might be a hoax by one of her father's friends. Although her father denied it, Samantha remained skeptical. Her doubts were ended, however, when an envelope from the Soviet embassy in Washington was delivered to her home in Maine. Inside, it was a cordial letter from Yuri Andropov, the Soviet leader, who thanked her for taking the trouble to write and expressed a concern similar to her own about the threat of nuclear war. The letter also included an invitation to Samantha and her parents to visit the Soviet Union. So she got a phone call from a Russian person and saying that there would be a reply to her letter, but she was skeptical. She was young, so she thought maybe they wouldn't have taken her seriously. So she thought maybe her dad was pulling a prank on her or one of his friends, but she received a legitimate letter um, from the Soviet leader who thanked her, um, said that he also doesn't want nuclear war to happen, and gave an invitation to Samantha and her parents to come and visit the Soviet Union. Samantha found herself famous overnight. She appeared on national television and she was written about in magazines. Not everyone agreed to her visit to the Soviet Union that it would be desirable though. People nationwide were soon discussing the issue. Those who supported her commended her for what she was doing and praised her as an example to young people everywhere. Those who dis dissented from the view believed that she should decline the invitation and stay home. They thought she was being manipulated by the communists who would use her visit for their own purposes. Samantha ignored the controversy swirling around her, and in July 1983, accompanied by her parents, she went to the Soviet Union. So because of this Cold War, the United States didn't trust the Soviet Union, the Soviet Union did not trust the United States. So there were people within the United States um, that felt two different ways, right? One side thought, what a great example of a young child trying to bring peace. Um, they thought she should go to the Soviet Union and experience it. But the other side thought maybe the Soviet Union is trying to trick or control this young girl to do something they want against the United States. Um, so there was two thoughts to it. But Samantha decided to make her own decision, and her and her parents went to visit the Soviet Union. She had never been abroad before, 
and she found the experience exhilarating. On her return, she wrote a book called Journey to the Soviet Union, in which she recounts everything that happened during her visit. She was also in invited to co-star in a television series. Her life at that point must have seemed like a fairy tale, and all because of the letter she had written. So she finally was able to go. She had a lovely time and wrote a book about her visit to the Soviet Union. She was invited to become a star in a television series. So in just a short period of time, her life changed quite a bit. With the collapse of communism in the Soviet Union in 1991, the threat of nuclear war was greatly reduced. Unfortunately, Samantha did not live to see this event. In 1985, shortly after she had commenced filming the new television series, she and her father died in a plane crash. During her short life, Samantha accomplished a great deal. She showed that if a young person, even one in elementary school, is willing to make her voice heard, the world will sometimes listen. So, unfortunately, Samantha was not around to see um, the threat of nuclear war um, reduce or go away um, because she had died in a plane crash with her father at a young age. But even during her short life, she was able to do a lot and showed that if as a young person um, or any kind of person, right, makes your voice heard, sometimes people will listen and it can lead to some great things. Thank you for reading with me today. We have links that are related to each of our articles. If you want the link for this one here, you can find it down in the description below.